this week, if you had your eyes and ears open, you most assuredly saw that there were, was one specific headline that was going across many huge reputable news sites, and that's that some hot dogs may contain things that they don't say they contain. For instance, chicken hot dogs might contain pork, and vegetarian hot dogs might contain meat, and all hot dogs might contain DNA, and this caught on like wildfire. Should you be scared? No. And here's what I'm going to tell you why. So this came from a place called Clear Labs. They're not really, I would call them a private organization as opposed to a scientific research group or uh, an educational group or some place that their goal is to scientifically and objectively study things. Uh, they currently have a Kickstarter, I will point out, uh, for their product. And I say product with, you know, what they do is they test meats and compounds to see if they contain what they really contain, uh, so they say, and that is what this Kickstarter is for right now. Um, this report came out to bolster that Kickstarter report. So what we're looking at is if you go to their Clear Labs website on the hot dog report, there's a lot of really beautiful infographics, charts, numbers, pictures of hot dogs, pictures of meat. It looks very nice and very well uh, put out. It'll give a beautiful presentation. But science, it isn't. This is actually more about advanced marketing techniques, or some would call it uh, borderline fraud. So what's interesting here is when you go and look at these infographics and you, you find out these numbers, you don't see anything indicating how these numbers were arrived at. What is the specific methodology? What is Clear Labs doing in order to make these determinations? They're not really clear. I mean, it, one can assume that they're doing it the same way that maybe human DNA is tested, but it doesn't really make that clear, and those would be different methods, I would say, to say the least. Uh, there's also no uh, specific quantities listed out. I mean, it does say that there is 345 hot dogs tested, but it doesn't say uh, what kinds of hot dogs they were. Maybe there were two veggie dogs tested. Maybe there were 200 veggie dogs tested. It's, it's, a, it's a different variety for each one. It's not really made clear what the sample size is for each specific test. Uh, there's also a complete lack of raw data. So usually when you go to a journal or you go to a reputable uh, report, there's some kind of uh, data listed that you can look over yourself and say, you know what, I don't really like this uh, uh, sample size, I don't think this is a good standard deviation, I don't know about this report. Or you could, on the other hand, say this is a good report and it was peer-reviewed. By the way, this was not peer-reviewed. I do want to note that Clear Foods didn't call it a study, they called it a report, which they might sound like words that are synonyms for each other, but they really aren't when you get to the scientific basis of it. Uh, they do mean two different things. There's a complete lack of credibility in this report in that it sh doesn't show how they arrived at this, what they did to arrive at this, what the data people can look at, and how many, how much did they test. When you look at the human DNA in food, it doesn't sound good. Uh, but it's, it's a, there's another reason why it doesn't sound good. I mean, human DNA, I, your hands have human DNA, your hair has human DNA, your spit, your, uh, your skin flakes, it, it's gross. It's probably not hygienic, but it does fall under the FDA regulations. Uh, that is a completely different story altogether. When you put out the word human DNA, or the phrase human DNA, it indicates that there's human flesh in this, or, or human blood in this, and that it's, you're, 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 you're a cannibal if you're eating this. And it doesn't outright state that, it's just heavily implied. They could have easily said, oh, there's dandruff flakes, and there's mucus in here, which is disgusting, but it's a different kind of disgusting, and it is misleading. Um, so. What, and they also don't clear, clearly state what their specific objective is here. But if you do dig into their site, you, uh, it is possible to get a sample of the product. So one can glean that the, uh, the specific objective here is to sell the product. And, you know, great, this is great marketing. This is ingenious marketing. But science, it does not make. And it does look like science. And to, the, to some certain lazy sites, uh, this is as far as they're going to go in, in terms of researching their scientific story or the merit of it or, or where it came from and what it is and how did we arrive at it. It's, not, it's a sexy headline, but it's not a real headline. So when you see this headline out there this week or you know, on your Facebook feed from maybe some not so real or credible news sites, be a little wary of it and look into it. Do a little bit more than 
than uh, some certain news companies did. Uh, please subscribe for more and like, and let me know what you think about this in the comments.